and they also allow everybody else to receive that. So we'll just run through sort of how the process works. What I've used here is I've used a proposal form, I've used a quote, and a policy. But for proposal, you could say any first start of documentation or any first start of information. And for the quote, you can say any second added addition to that information. For the policy, any third addition. So proposal. When the proposal sent out, and I put a customer, broker, MGA, insurer, and reinsurer in here because they'll all be interested in this. So as soon as that's filled in and sent, everyone gets the information at the same time without anybody needing to do any back office processing. As long as you've set the processes up to start with and everybody is part of that um, permission chain, and by permission blockchain what we mean is we've set it up and a lot of people are set it up because as brokers and insurers you do not want to share your information with other brokers and other insurers. So we've set up a permissioned way of doing it. So anybody who's part of that permission chain will get access to that information, but it happens real time. Now, what did we start with? When we started to prove this, we started with the Bordereau process. And we looked at the Bordereau process and we said, if we can resolve that Bordereau process, then what we'll be able to do is resolve the process for a number of other areas. So we've got a simple little app which says, a customer buys a policy, and there's got a smart Bordereau for an insurer and a broker, and what it shows is that everybody gets the same information at exactly the same time, and any changes that are made are fully auditable, and you can see those. So then what happens is you send the quote out and it's linked to that information. What then happens is those two pieces of information are digitally locked together and it is very, very difficult to hack that. The computing power needed because it's spread out over a number of places, so the five parties will have this. You have to hack each of those five parties to be able to break that. So you lock the information together and you know it is connected to the proposal form and everybody will have their own version of that. And then the quote comes out, and the quote is locked to it. But again, this can be any transaction or any part of a transaction. There's transparency and immutability. What do I mean by that? So the broker decides to change the information because their system's offline. But they will be the only people, or their system will be the only one with that record. But that will become true because everybody will be able to look at it and say, do you know what? The customer's got a different version of it, the insurer's got a different version of it, and the broker's the only one. So either that transaction is right, and then everybody adds it to their blocks or their systems, but if it isn't right, what has to happen is the customer and the insurer there have to add that transaction, and then they have to complete it to make it right. So you can actually see the full chain of everything that's happened. It is not something where you delete a transaction, and then everybody goes, okay. You can actually follow that whole chain through, and the whole principle behind this is making sure every single step that happened is shown in the process and everybody can see what's happened. We create a simpler ecosystem. So within the London market, you've got exchanging. What would happen is you wouldn't deal through a central system like that because one of the principles around the way people deal is it's a monthly process. So you bolt batch everything up, you bolt batch your transactions, a bit later bolt batch your payment. What you now start doing is you set up the controls in front of your own systems and you deal on a transactional basis. So every time you get a policy and one of your brokers and insurers writes a policy, you will know that policy has been written and that will come into your systems. And then when the payment comes through, the payment will be matched up to that customer account and you will know that this, is, this was a policy, here's a customer account. It is not, we've got a bunch of, we've got a bulk processing, here's a board row and here's a bulk payment that comes through because if a policy is written on the first day of the month, 45 days later you find out about it, 90 days later you go, I've got a payment. Things can happen in between and then you have all those reconciliation issues. You get rid of all that. So things like the board row is gone. So we've actually got a little app which says no more board rows. So shipping and blockchain, I've used this as an example. So this is, um, IBM and Maersk are working on a shipping platform. And this is applicable to how insurance will work. Or in my opinion, it's how shipping will work. So what they've done is at the moment to ship cargo around the world, you have to take various pieces of paper so you can get it certified, authorized, get through customs, etc. They have said they can actually reduce that because they will certify it on a blockchain application. So wherever it is, people can log in and it will have the right certification, the right documentation, and it's speeding everything up. 
Now, two, that becomes applicable in two ways. One, that cargo will be on the blockchain. So they will want an application that aligns to it. Secondly, how do we then sort of replicate that in the insurance world? Because we can do all they're doing in the blockchain world. One of the things about um, the assets that we insure, they will be put on a blockchain. So somebody will be able to buy a house and complete on that in about minutes. Okay? Why will that happen? At the moment you have a process where you will have a home and then you go through a solicitor, they do the searches and various other pieces of legal work has to be done. If the, if the house has an identity created, it will have its searches on there, it will have your council tax, it will have all your utility bills in there, etc, etc. So the house will have its own identity and that can have its own smart contract and then someone, they can put it up for sale against smart contract. All somebody has to do is put the money against it and then a digital identity executes that then and there. Cash will go one way, the ownership of the house then transfers over. So in the shipping world, something similar will start happening. People are sort of experimenting with that. They're experimenting with diamonds and a number of other things. So will they want their insurance as part of that smart contract? It may well be something that happens. Subscription model policy setup. So very simply, you've got a customer who takes out a policy. That's a subscription. You could actually add the reinsurer to that. Customer pays a premium. That premium will automatically be paid to every party and they will get their own mount. It doesn't have to go to one insurer who then divvies it up. You can do it at source. So changing the efficiency, no back office processing required for that. And it's as simple as that. And digital confirmation, everybody will have a digital key. It could be a QR code or it could be something else that's just scanned in. It could be a, we call them seed phrases, which is like a 12, a 12 uh, word phrase and you just type that in and that's yours and nobody else can sort of steal that. But it's simple, it just whirls through. Now, the cash will go, the data will go and it goes straight into your systems you know real time what risk you're on for. Claims model settlement. So claims is where it becomes even more interesting. So at the moment, we do TPAs, in-house claims teams, etc. deal with this. But with the way technology is going, nowadays, you can use a new claims model or you can use, let's say, just a simple photograph application to cut down on fraud or help you with the fraudulent side of it. So the application we built, it's a motor app, but we've been talking to um, a couple of brokers about setting something up for, let's say, pubs and entertainment. And where we've been talking to them about is, why don't you just develop a little app, and at that point in time, if somebody slips on a, on a wet dance floor, you take some pictures of it, and you take pictures of the damage, and you take pictures of the person who's been hurt, you get their statement, and you send it to them. But you also send it to the insurer and the broker at the same time. At that point in time, everybody has a record of what's happened. So if two days later, the person who slipped says, okay, I've been talking to my friends, I've actually got whiplash or I've hurt my arm, and etc. They then got to go against something they've already said. One of the customers we're talking to is a marine broker and he said, do you know what, we could use this for marine accidents because we could give it to people who are on the boat, they can take pictures of it then and there and they can send it with all the information we require. Where that then becomes useful is you can geotag the photographs. So you know that the accident actually happened where they said, when it said, and everybody's got that one version of the truth. So everybody's actually talking from the same place rather than I said, you said, etc. So we're sort of developing those kinds of applications. The settlement process for this would be to settle the claim at 800,000, add a million original reserve, 200,000 pounds worth of reserves gets released straight away. What would actually happen to, at the first point though would be each insurer would have put the capital up against this. So you've got a million there already put up against a smart contract. So that reduced to 800,000. The insurers approve the payment and release the excess capital. Once a claimant accepts settlement, the payment then is made to every single party. So the claimant will get their money, the TPA real time, and if there's a reinsurer involved in the contract, they will put up their money as well and they would settle at the same time as well. So what the smart contract does, it's a real time executable document. And all financial obligations are resolved at that point in time. There's no reconciliation issues because everybody's already been part of it. You don't have to wait for a delay of information from somebody. So the benefits of blockchain. The transactions are faster. There's a process integrity because it happens quicker. Lower cost transactions. 
simplified ecosystem, and a number of those other things, which I'm not going to run through. So what does it really mean, though? So where's a real disruption? Because okay, that's one of the things I was here to talk about. So you could have a complex policy of any kind, but all of a sudden you can move it to a mobile platform because everything's contained there. All you really want your customer journey to be is for them to renew the policy or to ask some questions. You've created their identity. You've created the policy. So why should they ever have to fill any more forms in? Actually, the customer journey becomes much more efficient. The, the insurers and the brokers who embrace that and say, we're going to create a different customer journey where the customer just sits there and presses a few buttons and renews their insurance because everything else is set up for them will probably be the winners. Like I said before, I think direct insurers, aggregator models could drastically change because all of a sudden it's based on the service that a customer is going to get. And face-to-face -face is much better in our world than over the phone. Some new models and smaller policies will come along. We deal in annual policies most of the time. Why is it we have to have annual policies? Can it actually change from annual policies to shorter term policies or absolutely specific cover? Some of our policies are all packaged up. So one insurer may have 12 sections on a policy. Why have one policy, 12 sections, one insurer? Customers may be able to say, well, actually, these are my 12 sections. I'm going to split it up, and the 12 best insurers can take the section that they want because their identity will be open to them. They'll be in charge of it. So the whole model will change slightly. You know? And then we go to cryptocurrencies and digital currencies where there are big risk pools of money available and people are trying to deploy this. And there are people actually working out there to say, how can we change the way insurance works? Can we actually do peer-to-peer -peer insurance and insure our assets? Because on one side, I can create a contract which says, this is my asset. On the other side, you're going to then insure it for me with a pool behind you. And there's actual talk and people are working on those mutual policies. And then those are sort of the growth models, but it radically changes the back office processing and the cost of an insurance business. And it's not just externally. You can change the internal processing. So if the data is flowing between an insurer, a broker, a TPA, and an insurer, why can it not just flow straight into your business and go to your actuarial function, to your finance function, straight to your claims function? And then you look at the capital side of it. Capital is tied up in claims floats or premium floats with brokers and insurers and TPAs. Insurers can then just say, well, actually, we're going to keep hold of that pool of money. <coughs> and we're not going to deploy that. But what we can do is we, we know that we're going to put it against a smart contract. And as soon as a claim's settled, we'll settle it out. But we don't have to give floats to TPAs. So the capital efficiency becomes much, much better. And there's profitability from the investment income there. So blockchain is its early days. For us, we sort of say it's in four phases. There's discovery, there's adoption, then there'll be the challenge, the norm, and then there'll be a settling down of what we, where we are. So discovery is where we are. People are still trying to learn about it. People in the industry, people in the blockchain world. And they'll figure that out in the next year, 18 months, two years. And then you get to the adoption, and the industry will adopt it. And there'll be some people who do it quicker than others. But then after that, you start challenging some of these norms around the insurance industry. So things like... Why do we have some of the regulatory processes that we have? So KYC becomes automated. Do you need client money regulation because premiums are paid straight to um, the insurer and never taken by a broker? But then also about geography. So if somebody's got a business where their fleet is driving around Spain and France, why do they have to buy a policy in the UK? Why can they not buy it in France, even if it's cheaper and it's better cover for them? Or why do they have to have a policy that's a UK policy? Claims are paid. In the, you have to come back to the UK to claim. To claim, Why? Why can you not claim when you're in another country? You've got all the process, you've got all the information, and you just say here, and the claim's paid in 24 hours. And then things start settling down into the new world where cryptocurrency, digital currency take over. So there'll be changes. It's perfectly suited to insurance. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at it. It's got the same core attributes of insurance. Yep. It improves processing and cost benefits, but it does give growth opportunities as well because it makes other types of insurance that we've never done before, like microinsurance, which people have always been grappling with. How do you do microinsurance? All of a sudden, you can develop platforms that can deliver microinsurance because the processing cost is just so low now and the distribution costs are so low that you can actually bring microinsurance policies into play. And it does change how things happen, and it will change how risk management will work because people will be doing things in a different way. There'll be a different way of looking at assets. They won't be stored like they were. Ownership documentation will be different, and I think we'll have to follow suit.
London Market Forums, bringing insurance professionals together.